new BMAT initiates, congratulations on successfully completing Course 101, and welcome to Course 102, Advanced Electronics. I hope you're amped to learn a more in-depth theory over the next 17 days. Today, you should have learned about transistors and basic transistor operation. With that said, let's dig into your first rewind video for Course 102. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over today is the transistor. The purpose of a transistor is that it's a three-terminal, two-pn junction semiconductor device used to control current in a circuit. There are two types of transistors, the NPN transistor and the PNP transistor. And if you look over to the right, you'll see the schematic symbol and the label for each one. Transistors are commonly used as three of the following things, amplifiers, oscillators, and electronic switches, all of which you'll see over the next 17 days. Now let's move on specifically to the NPN transistor. The NPN transistor can be easily identified by its schematic trait of an arrow that's not pointing in. Pro tip. Each transistor consists of three terminals, an emitter, a base, and a collector. Because there are only two PN junctions, each terminal is doped in semiconductor material slightly different. The emitter is going to be heavily doped in n-type material, or electrons, the base, thin and lightly doped in p-type material, or holes, and the collector, moderately doped in n-type material, or electrons. A transistor has two requirements needed for it to conduct, or for it to allow current flow. The first one needs to be forward bias of the base emitter junction. If you look over to the right, I will actually draw in the requirements. So to forward bias the base emitter junction, we need to have at least 0.6 volts greater on the base. So whatever voltage level we have on the emitter, we need 0.6 volts more on the base. In this case, I put zero volts on the emitter. So that means we need 0.6 volts on the base to forward bias the base emitter junction. The other requirement, we need to reverse bias the base collector junction, meaning that I need a more positive voltage, which is most likely my supply voltage on the collector, and a much less or more negative value on the base. 0.6 is a whole lot more negative than, let's say, positive 12 volts. Now, once a transistor is conducting, there will be current flow from the emitter via the base to the collector because current always flows negative to positive. Now, let's briefly discuss the percentages of current flow before we move on. Since current flow is entering the emitter, we have 100% emitter current, 3 to 5% we lose through the base, and the remaining 95 to 97% comes out the collector and heads towards our supply voltage. With that being said, let's move on to the PNP transistor. The PNP transistor still consists of three terminals and two PN junctions. The primary difference is how each of these terminals are doped in semiconductor material. The emitter is still heavily doped, this time in p-type material, or holes. The base, then in lightly doped, in n-type material, and the collector, moderately doped in p-type material, or holes. Now, it still has two requirements to turn it on, and they're the same. We still have to forward bias the base emitter junction, like this, and we still have to reverse bias the base collector junction, like this. Because we use negative supply voltages in the PNP, current flow will actually go from the collector to the emitter, or the most negative to the most positive. Now, let's discuss the percentages of current flow in a PNP transistor. The emitter receives 100% current flow. We still lose 3 to 5% through our thin and lightly doped base, and 95 to 97% through our moderately doped collector. Now let's move on to our last topic, transistor operation. Okay, so by this point, we've learned what a transistor is and the two types along with their requirements. Let's take a transistor and go ahead and put it in a circuit. So where it says positive VCC, let's apply 12 volts there. Now let's take a look at R1 and R2. They're gonna act as a voltage divider network that actually develops our base voltage, which we'll call base bias. Now, I'm sure you learned in course one that if R1 and R2 are equal value resistors with 12 volt supply, we should have six volts sitting on the base, Q1. Q2 
is an NPN transistor, so because of that, we know that it should have 0.6 volts less sitting on the emitter than what's on the base. So we should have 5.4 volts sitting on the emitter of Q1. Now, essentially all we did at this point is allow Q1 to turn on or to conduct. Now, let's start increasing that base voltage. Let's say we adjust R1 and R2 and we place more than six volts. We start increasing that value. What we're doing is increasing the forward bias of the base emitter junction. Anytime we increase the forward bias of the base emitter junction, we are going to increase current flow. Current flow through the emitter, current flow through the base, and current flow through the collector. Now if I increase this value it, and continue increasing it, eventually the forward bias of the base emitter junction won't be able to increase anymore, or we won't be able to increase current flow anymore. This is known as saturation, or maximum current flow. At this point, the transistor acts like there's a short between the emitter and collector, or there's no voltage drop. So if you measure across it with a voltmeter, you'd actually measure zero volts because it's not actually dropping any voltage. Now let's do the opposite. Let's take that six volts and slowly decrease it. Anytime we decrease the base voltage on an NPN transistor, we're decreasing the forward bias of the base emitter junction, which is going to decrease current flow. And eventually, if we keep decreasing that value enough, we'll actually cause the transistor to stop conducting. When this happens, it's known as cutoff, or no current flow. Alright, thank you guys for listening, and be sure to ask plenty of questions in class tomorrow. And remember, if you don't use proper BMAT grammar, we may tell you that we don't like the way you're talking to us. Mm -hmm.